Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing good. Please stay inside and stay safe. Most of the states have locked down and uh, please, uh, you know, uh, take care of yourselves. And uh, in this video, I want to talk about uh, an internship test that took place in my college. There is a company called Soroko, which had come on campus and it conducted a test to recruit interns. So software engineer interns. So they had come to recruit and uh, the criteria was if you have a CGPA of a seven and you belong to any branch, you can apply for it. And uh, the stipend that they are offering uh, uh, is uh, 50,000 Indian rupees. Duration was not confirmed. And uh, so actually before telling more about the process and what questions were asked and how the things went. See, first of all, I did not give it. Uh, I already have got an internship, so I can't sit for another. But my friends in college have given and I have asked them how their experiences are, what questions were asked. So I'm sharing those things with you. So Soroko is a company which specializes in like AI automation and these kind of things. It is a product based company, but it provides services. So sometimes you can also find on the net that people say it is a service based company, but you can't believe everything that's on net. So it is left up to you what you want to think about it, but it is a nice company. And this internship opportunity was coming along with the PPO pre placement offer. And usually Soroko offers a 12 lakh CTC. So it was quite a decent uh, opportunity. And since all branch students were allowed, it was very equal. Otherwise it's kind of partial only circuit branch students are usually allowed. So the company uh, conducted a coding round. So first was a coding round and uh, there were four questions that were asked. So the first question that I got to know is something with greedy and sorting. It was a very easy problem and usually greedy and sorting kind of problems. You don't have to think a lot. You will automatically get to know you have to do sorting. The question itself will be framed like that, that you will get to know you have to do greedy sorting. So if you have done basic code chef code forces problems, you will definitely get it. So that was the first question. My friends don't remember the exact wordings and because I didn't sit for it, I don't also know. So I'm just telling you what kind of questions and if you have to prepare next year or this coming year or whenever, just keep in mind what kind of topics and level of difficulty it is. Second question was again sorting with anagram strings. This was also kind of easy only. And uh, anagrams, uh, usually you require hashing also. So maybe you have to use hashing, but those concepts were anagrams that is in string and sorting. And uh, maybe you could use hashing also maps. Then the third question uh, was uh, actually something uh, which was related to string only again. It was a very general kind of problem. Apparently it was very general and that was easiest. So you can see that till now three questions I told you they are easy only. So easy for who? So it will be easy if you have done a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, competitive programming or some DSA sheets, if you have done that already, then it will be definitely very easy for you. But if you appear directly in the interview thinking that, okay, I know programming, you know, the syntax and all I will do it. Maybe time limit will be there and you will not be able to solve everything because ultimately some people were shortlisted based on your, based on their accuracy and the timing also, right? So that is also important. So that is where competitive programming will help you. And many people are asking me, does it help or not competitive programming? So yes, in these kind of things, it will definitely help. Now let us go further. The fourth question was on dynamic programming and binary search. So this was a very tough problem and only few people got all the test cases passed. And actually some of my friends say this was like the decider kind of problem. So these were the four things and the concepts that were asked are listed over here. You can see that. So basically it is good if you see the concepts, like you can't solve each and every problem, but you should get an idea what to be done in this kind of a problem. So practice variety of questions. So that was the coding round and some, some people were shortlisted from different branches. Then the interview face to face interview. So the face to face interview had two rounds. First round was they were given like a problem only technical interview. Some problem was asked. Oops, coding DSA like this. Second round was on projects. So many people could not clear first round, but whoever cleared second round, there was thorough discussion on project work. First round, they were asking different people, different questions, but most of my good friends had got uh, DFS. So depth first search problems, they were asked. And also some people got depth first search along with oops. That means you had to do the actual coding. You had to show them. It's not just about giving the approach. You had to do the actual coding. Now this can be tough if you are very new to graph, if you're very new to depth first search and you just know the approach, then most probably you won't be able to do it. But some other people got different topics only. So it was easy. So this is where some part of luck also plays that, you know, it is not uniform. People will feel bad that I could have answered the other problem. I was asked a problem that I didn't know only. So this is where a little luck also comes into play. So just keep that also in mind that everything might not go your way. But if you cleared the first round, so whoever cleared the first round after that, the second round was the projects. Now, see, I told you in the beginning, only Soroko is a company which is developing uh, this thing. It's working on AI automation and developing such kind of softwares and helping other companies grow. So they like people who do projects like this, who do projects on AI, machine, blockchain, uh, machine learning, deep learning, uh, neural network, all these kind of new, new technologies. 
So if you are someone who has done courses from Coursera or from other places and you have already done some projects, then these kind of companies will actually welcome you. You will get a good chance. Although your competitive programming is not so strong, maybe your DSA is fine, fine, you can still get it. So this is the power of doing good projects. So one more lesson that we can learn from this is competitive programming is not the ultimate thing. There are so many people getting so many different kinds of opportunities without doing competitive programming. But again, if you do, you should do it to a level that will help you in different places. Do it to a certain level that it will keep you secure. So you should just try variety of questions. That's what I observed as a student. That's what I have understood and I'm sharing that with you. So this was about the interview process. Four students were selected ultimately. And uh, yeah, this was everything about it. So I hope you got some kind of awareness and uh, you took the message that I gave you uh, in a positive way. Like uh, work on different things. Don't just stick to one line. You can and you should explore. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked. And if you did hit the like button, please share it with all your friends as much as possible. Ask them to support me. Please subscribe to the channel. It will really, really motivate me. And uh, stay tuned for the next videos. Take care. Stay safe. Keep learning. Keep growing. Bye.